Short, simple answer, yes. And I am quite certain, dear viewer, that you would like a bit more elaboration than that. So did the Romans sail west in search of Atlantis. Generally speaking, very simple crafts are capable of crossing the oceans. So Heyerdahl, after his success in the Pacific with the Kentucky expedition, later proved that the Atlantic could be crossed with Egyptian-style papyrus reed boats during the, his Ra-2 expedition in 1970. Roman ships were considerably more advanced, so they too would be able to make the crossing. So too with the earlier Greek, Carthaginian and Phoenician ships. The limit does not really lie in the capability of the ancient ships. Both the Carthaginians and the Greeks had passed the Pillars of Hercules, traversing into the Atlantic long before the Romans. As early as the 500s BC, the Carthaginian explorer Hanno had sailed far down the coast of Africa, making much of the coastline and the Canary Islands known to the western Mediterranean. And from the Greek city-state Massalia, today's Marseille in southern France, the Greek explorer Pythias went in the opposite direction in the 380s BC. He went up through the Bay of Biscay and charted much of the British Isles and went as far as a land called Thule, where the ocean froze over to become solid. This goes to show how far Mediterranean ships could sail even centuries before the Romans really became seafaring, so there was much experience to draw from. We should not forget that the Romans inherited both the Carthaginian, Greek and Phoenician shipbuilding practices, with all of them becoming Roman subjects. So a ship voyaging across the Atlantic from the Roman Empire needed not have Romans on board, merely non-citizen subjects of Rome, who would return to Roman provinces. This is actually an important point. A ship from a Roman province crossing the Atlantic would most likely be manned by Greek or Phoenician sailors. And the Atlantic could have been crossed by these before Rome had any provinces by the Atlantic. The first province of Rome to border the Atlantic would be Hispania Ulteria, which was established in 197 BC. Before that, the area had been dominated by Carthage, but following the Second Punic War, the region was surrendered to Rome. Incidentally, the coastal region by the Atlantic, thus gained by Rome, would be the same that Christopher Columbus set out from 1700 years later, so the wind and current patterns would be roughly the same. The Romans did not, however, have the caravels with their excellent maneuverability and tacking ability, or the larger caracks with good oceanic ability. Also ships of antiquity used steering oars rather than rudders, which affected maneuverability. Moreover, there is no evidence that an aggregational technique like the Volta do Mar had been developed at the time. It would also have required more maneuverability. It seems more likely that sea voyages down the African coast would have used the same night and day cycle winds near the coast as was used in the Mediterranean, so onshore wind during day and offshore during night. But the prevailing trade winds and westerlies in the area would most likely have been known, including their seasonal move up and down the latitudes, so a base knowledge would have been available to both the Romans and their subjects in Hispania Ulteria. To go across the Atlantic to America, any Roman or other ship of antiquity would need to use a route much like the one used by Columbus, which would require less than doing a Volta do Mar as you would go full circle in the Atlantic. This means that they would first need to go south of the horse latitudes to the Canary Islands. The Canaries were visited by both the Phoenicians, Greeks and Carthaginians, and are mentioned by the Roman author Pliny the Elder in the 1st century AD. Moreover, recent archaeological studies from 2024 by the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria suggest that the Romans actually colonized the islands between the 1st century BC and the 1st century AD. This would put this Roman colony at a prime location for using the trade winds to cross the Atlantic, both by design or by accident. At least this archaeological evidence makes it more possible for the Romans to have crossed the Atlantic and have had some knowledge of a new world on the other side. 
However, unlike the proven Norse Viking settlement in the New World, a millennium later, the Romans could not island hop across the Atlantic due to the lack of islands. And even if this was not really a Roman strategy for colonization, it would have been more akin to the earlier Greek colonization through daughter cities. A Roman settlement in the Canary Islands does make an accidental arrival in the Americas possible, however, a ship blown off course out in the open Atlantic might end up at the Caribbean islands before being able to get up into the Vestalies and back home. This might have led to some knowledge of land across the sea and added to the tales of Atlantis, but would most likely not have left much in the way of written accounts for posterity. Only if something of value had been found would more consistent journeys have begun. And this is a good point. When Columbus set out across the Atlantic, he had a specific goal. He was looking for a shortcut to the east around hostile middlemen in the Islamic world. This was not an issue for the Romans as trade passed through Egypt and Syria with limited hostility even before these became provinces. So there was not such a great economic incentive for a western sea route to Asia. Even so, some indications do exist of contact between the old and new world during antiquity with one of the more interesting being the Bay of Jars or Guanabara Bay near Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Here amphora-like pottery in large numbers have been found at the bottom of the bay. Rio de Janeiro is rather far south and amphora-like pottery was also used by the Portuguese, but the find is thought-provoking nonetheless. Few proofs have been found of solid contact across the Atlantic, which does point to the aforementioned lack of reason more than lack of ability. The riches that lured the conquistadors to Mexico could have lured in Roman commanders eager to line their pockets, but the conquistadors set out from colonies on the Caribbean islands. Even with settlements on the Canary Islands and ships that could have gone across the Atlantic, no lasting presence was ever established by the Romans.